What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at this beautiful 2024 Volkswagen ID4 Pro S all-wheel drive. Now the ID4 was an EV that I heavily considered when I traded in my 2022 Chevy Bolt EUV. And there were a couple reasons why I didn't pick the ID4 and ended up getting a Model 3. But honestly, many of the issues that I had with the ID4 have been fixed here in 2024. Now this specific model in pure gray stickers for about $57,000 pre-tax credit, but it has a ton of bells and whistles being the Pro S just a hair under the top Pro S Plus trim. So let's take a look at everything that this vehicle has to offer and then take it for a quick test drive. So let's start here on the front of the ID4. It's a very simple design as you can see, but I love that. I like the nice clean body colored split here. You get a little bit of air pass through down here, a little bit of cooling there for the battery at the bottom. You get ultrasonic sensors. This whole headlight kit up here is a full LED steering responsive kit with poor weather lighting. You've got some accent DRLs. You've got this light bar that runs across the front. The Volkswagen badge is illuminated and these have the adaptive cornering feature to them as well. So full steering responsive kit. It looks so nice and I love this pure gray color. It's one of my favorites that Volkswagen offers. Now, one thing you are not going to get on the ID4 is a frunk. As you can see here, you get basically access to all of your electrical components. There's a motor down there. Since this is a dual motor configuration, you can get easy access to your wiper fluid, but uh, unfortunately no frunk here. Luckily, you do have some nice storage in the back. This ID4 Pro S here is sitting on 20 inch alloy wheels. I think they're a really cool design, almost like a throwing star look to them. Some all wheel drive Pro S badging here, body colored side mirrors. They are heated, integrated turn signals, blind spot monitoring built in. But one of the things they removed in 2024 uh, is that you no longer have the option to get power folding mirrors, which I think is really unfortunate because there are a lot of other EVs in this segment that have power folding mirrors and it's kind of more of a premium feature and uh, this very expensive ID4 does not have them. They just straight up got rid of them. So manual folding mirrors. You do get keyless access. You've got roof rails up top and a huge piece of fixed panoramic glass up top that does have a shade. If we come around back here, you've got some nice LED tail lights here with this light bar that runs across the back that acts as your brake light. Even this Volkswagen badge lights up and is a part of your brake light. ID4 badging here. You have a rear camera underneath, a power lift gate, and here in the back, you get 30 cubic feet of cargo space with the second row seats up. If you fold those down with the 60-40 split, you get 64 cubic feet of cargo space, and there is a middle pass-through in case you just want to use that. Cargo shade, you got some LED lights, 12-volt outlet. You've got your two-in-one charging cable back here as well, and there is some storage up underneath the floorboard if you want to store everything down there. If we come around here to the charge port area, we can pop that open. Got a little LED light in here. It is a J1772 adapter, so no NACS yet. You do have DC fast charging, which in the past, not all Volkswagen ID4s could DC fast charge. The lower trims couldn't. Fortunately, that's something they fixed because that's ridiculous to sell a car in 2024 that is electric that can't DC fast charge, but it can charge up to 175 kilowatts of DC fast charging and standard onboard charger is 11 kilowatts. And as far as performance here in 2024, they've increased the battery size and the motor performance a little bit. So this model has an 82 kilowatt hour battery pack powering two motors, one in the front, one in the back. They're gonna combine for 335 horsepower and it'll get you about 263 miles of range on a full charge. But again, that's EPA estimated range. You're never really gonna get that. So I'm gonna guess somewhere in like the 240 to 50 range. If we go ahead and open up the back here, we can see the door materials here take a step down from the front. It's just hard plastic here. You get some galaxy gray accented leatherette here ton of gloss black plastic in this thing, as you'll see in a bit, and then hard black plastic all down here. Now the seating surfaces in the front and the back are this two-tone black and gray seat. They call it Galaxy. Like I said, 60-40 split fold here with the center pass-through. But if we go ahead and hop back here, you can see the rear leg room here. It's pretty good. You know, you get about, I don't know, three, four inches of rear leg room here, and this seat's very far back in the kind of easy exit position. So you can scoot that forward and get a good bit more leg room. 
you got rear vents back here, two USB-C ports, you get a map pocket at the bottom and a little phone pocket at the top as well. And of course you can get access to that beautiful panoramic roof back here. But hopping here into the front seats, you can see the better materials up here. This is a soft touch instead of a hard plastic. You get a little bit of a gray satin accent here, more of that gray leather with the accent stitching more gloss black plastic, but you do still just have hard plastic down at the bottom here. Now, if we take a look at the seating controls here, you may notice this little button here. Yes, we do have massaging seats here on the ID4. These are 12 way power adjustable seats with four way lumbar and that massaging. They're heated and ventilated with this two-tone galaxy styling with the perforations down the center and the little ID badge there. So very, very comfortable seats, very customizable, and love having that massaging there. But if we hop here into the front seat, you may have noticed that uh, the car turned on. So it does have a push to start button on the side, but it knows when you sit down in the seat and will automatically turn on all the electronics. And if you put your foot on the brake, the vehicle's actually gonna turn on. So my seat moved forward and all the lights and things came on, the air conditioning. So it's got passenger occupancy sensors built into it that are gonna help with that. And that position memory seat is awesome. Reminds me a lot of what my Model 3 does when I get in that. You do have a little pad over here that has all of your lighting controls on it. And then Volkswagen has basically done what all other EV manufacturers are doing these days, which is having two stocks on the back of the steering wheel. One stock is a combo light and wiper stock. The other one is your shift stock. So it actually used to be up here in 2023, mounted basically right here on the side of this little screen, but they've moved it down here and made the screen independent. Now there's literally no reasons why we need this screen. It is dumb, get rid of it or make it massive because this little dinky five inch screen is pointless. But you've got touch capacitive buttons all over this thing, increasing volume here, using travel assist as a button. You can set your distance and your speed there. And then you've got your media controls and your heated steering wheel on the right side. You can hit this view button to switch between a couple different views there. Yeah, if you don't like touch capacitive, you're not gonna like this. There's even more of it over here on this infotainment display. This is a 12.9 inch Volkswagen infotainment display. They changed the stylings a lot from last year. So new graphics package here and it works a lot better than it did. That was one of my main reasons why I did not get the ID4 is because I really did not like how laggy and unresponsive the infotainment display was. And now they've really fixed it. Although I think they went a little bit of a negative direction by making the graphics package a little bit worse than it used to be in my opinion. So you sacrifice worse graphics for better performance, pick your poison, I guess, but still has a ton of great features, navigation built in on this model, wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, you got a self parking feature, you've got different drive modes, you've got ambient lighting that you can customize there. You can actually move the passenger seat forward and backwards using the driver seat controls, which is a feature that I really want Tesla to bring. I actually talked about this in a previous video of something that would be really nice to do. And you can also synchronize the seating positions, which is cool. I've yet to see that on any other cars in this price point. You do have Volkswagen's assistant here, the ID assistant. You've got on-screen climate control and you have Volkswagen's ID light, which will indicate different things. Like when you say, hello ID, you can see it kind of light up there and then you can ask it a command or something like that. Of course you have a rear view camera as well, but one of the things they got rid of in 2024 is the 360 degree overhead view cam system, which I think is a real shame. Of course you've got a charging menu here and then you can turn on your heated and ventilated seats right there. Here you've got two cup holders. You've got a Qi enabled wireless charging pad, two USB-C ports, and then a nice deep center console here and a standard glove box over there. Touch capacitive lighting up here, really neat. And then you can slide to close your gigantic panoramic roof up top as well. All right, let's take the ID4 for a test drive here. So again, foot on the brake, twist forward once for regular drive mode, forward one more time for braking mode. We'll go ahead and put it in braking mode for now. This is gonna be your more traditional EV driving experience, kind of your one pedal driving mode where you just let off the acceleration, the vehicle is gonna slow down on its own. If you prefer a more traditional driving experience, you can switch to the drive and then when you let off, you're gonna keep rolling. So really up to you how you prefer to drive, but I'm very accustomed to driving EVs, so I'm very used to the braking mode. So we'll go ahead and leave it in that. And I'm gonna change my drive mode to sport just cause it's the fastest acceleration curve and it's more fun. But if you want the best range, then you wanna drive in something more like comfort. But let's go ahead and uh, we'll come to a stop here 
and we'll just put her to the floor. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting, right? It's a little bit hard to explain because if you've driven an EV before, you know that instantaneous punch and torque that EVs have. Like the second you push the pedal down, like it throws you back. But it, to me, after driving a lot of stinking EVs, it feels like it doesn't like follow through on the punch. Like it just punches and then you just stay. It's like it doesn't speed up. It's the weirdest feeling. It doesn't make any sense. It's like all the power is there, but it just doesn't translate to speed. It still feels super fast though. Like if you're a Volkswagen owner and you're coming off of a Taos or a Tiguan or an Atlas or a Cross Sport or something along those lines, like you're going to feel that punch and that power and it's gonna feel like nothing you've driven before if you're coming off of those vehicles. If you're coming off of other EVs that have more torque, more horsepower, maybe it feels a little underpowered, which is kind of where I'm at. This is still a large vehicle, it's still a heavy vehicle, and only having 335 horsepower, it's not super competitive with everything else out there, especially for $56,000. You can get a Model Y performance for significantly less money than this, and it's gonna have way more torque and way more horsepower and be way more exhilarating to drive. Maybe the suspension isn't as good, but as far as just immediate off the line zero to 60 performance, you'll be able to beat this in some other vehicles at this price point and size. But maybe you don't care about straight off the line speeds or zero to 60 times or anything like that. That's totally fine. What other good things are there about the ID4? Well, I mentioned it already. These seating surfaces are awesome. Having heated and ventilated seats, with this leatherette that are 12 way power adjustable with massaging. I need to turn this on, I don't know why I keep forgetting. That's hard to find at this price point, and it's really nice, it feels good. Now, are they the most intricate, interesting seating surfaces? No, but they do look really nice. And this thing is loaded up with tech features, right? You have tons of safety features that are all really nice on top of Travel Assist, which is a really, really nice semi-autonomous driving system that Volkswagen has. You've got regular adaptive cruise control that's predictive. This has stop and go as well, so it'll bring you to a full stop, speed you back up. Perfect for all those annoying traffic situations that are stop and go. You've got a massive 12.9 inch infotainment screen that's really fluid and has some really nice features built into it. Wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto look really nice. That rear view camera, again, I wish it was a 360 degree camera or at least gave you the option to look at different views. Really, you could just see the rear camera view, so that's not the best, but it's what we're stuck with, unfortunately. So a lot of really nice advanced technology features. And you may have noticed right there when I made that turn, the turning radius on this thing is insane. Like it feels very agile and sporty while it's still got plenty of cargo carrying capability and passenger volume. But I mean, plenty of punch there. You know, you've got navigation, you've got, oh, this guy wanted to race me. Oh, I just get absolutely cooked, bud, just cooked. Little buddy thought he had something when I let off. That was cute. But yeah, I mean, you can see right there, like this has plenty of torque, plenty of go. I mean, that was a freaking Hyundai Sonata from 2008. So like, you know, who cares? But at the same time, like it's got plenty of juice. But anyway, I think really the only thing that people are not gonna care for in this vehicle is all of the gloss black plastic and the touch capacitive buttons. I know that's such a hot button topic people really don't like to have to fidget with non-traditional buttons when they're driving so having to slide your finger around and things not the best but one thing that they did in 2024 is they actually made all of these sliders illuminated so it's a lot easier to see at night where you're actually sliding and you're not just you know running your fingers all over the display for no reason so that's a nice you know positive change for 2024. Outside of that, the boost in power for 2024 and the larger screen size with the updated graphics and you know better performance on this display are all new for 2024. Outside of that, it's about the same. Now, back when I was gonna get a new EV, part of the reason why I didn't go with the ID4 was the really poor performance with the infotainment display and the just lack of power. Just the ID4 has always felt underpowered to me. And I think it's better now with the increased motor performance, the larger battery size, you know, up to that 335 horsepower on all-wheel drive, it's fine. I really still wish they'd come out with a performance variant. Something in that 500 horsepower range would be a lot of fun. Just having the option of performance, not it being the only option, but just an option. And then 
they fixed the infotainment display, but I still wouldn't choose this infotainment display over Tesla or Rivian. Would I choose it over just about everything else? Yeah, it's really good. So I think most, if not all, of the reasons why I didn't go with the ID4 have been fixed here in 2024. So I definitely think it's an EV worth considering. The only downside really is it's just expensive still. Let's use travel assist here, not on the highway. And see kind of what curves it'll take me around here. Look at that. Now this isn't a hands-free system. It will make you keep your hands on the wheel, but that was a pretty strong curve that it just went around. And it's keeping me away from this vehicle in front of me. So while some semi-autonomous driving features don't work off the highway, <clears throat> Super Cruise, this one will, and it's really nice. Not fully hands-free like Super Cruise, but Volkswagen could change that pretty easily. So thanks so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, drop a like. Let me know down in the comments what you think about this 2024 Volkswagen ID4 Pro S all-wheel drive. Do you have one? Are you shopping one? Let's talk about it down in the comments. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button to be among the first to see every single new video the second I hit publish. We'll see you in the next one.